This is all new from GPT-4, and it's mind-blowing. You won't believe what I have discovered. Honestly, I didn't at first either, but hey, it's artificial intelligence, and anything is possible. By the end of this video, you'll see how Microsoft's new AI is taking the industry by storm. This isn't just another video recycling content for views. I have done extensive research, and what I'm about to share with you is pure facts. Stay tuned because you don't want to miss any part of this video. Let's get started. Small TikTok of Musk Microsoft's GPT-4 is here, and it comes with all new modalities and improvements. At an information event on March 9, 2023, for Microsoft Germany employees, large language models called LLMs, like the GPT series, were presented as a force to be reckoned with. In the course of the event, Andreas Brahm, CTO of Microsoft Germany, casually mentioned the imminent release of GPT-4. We will introduce GPT-4 next week. We will have multimodal models that offer completely different possibilities, for example, videos. I can't wait to see how that turns out. Brown called large language models a game changer because they teach AI tools to understand natural language, and I couldn't agree more. Looking at the previous GPT-3 and 3.5 models, it's undeniable how far AI has come in understanding simple language. ChatGT, for instance, understands and generates text like a human with just a few tweaks. It's hard to believe a chatbot wrote that piece of text. Something I have found really cool is Microsoft's Cosmos One, which surprisingly many people do not know about. Since ChatGPT has been all the rage, I've been mentioning multimodal models a lot, and you will see how Cosmos One is a step in that direction, possibly a stepping stone for GPT-4. I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with ChatGPT by now, and most likely with Midjourney as well. Midjourney is typically image-based, while ChatGPT, as we all know, is a text expert. So what happens when you put these two together? You get a multimodal model that combines text and image. Now, some researchers believe that multimodal AI models can develop a better understanding of the world by learning from different data sources. I think that's the remarkable thing about multimodal models, and they could be used in different circumstances by different people. It could be beneficial to visually impaired people, and it could also be very helpful to anyone who wants to learn about something. This model can combine knowledge from different modalities to solve tasks like describing images, and not just describing images, but doing things in natural language, something understandable to us humans. Microsoft trained Cosmos, one with language and image data, and the results are impressive. The model can understand text and images, including answering questions about images, recognizing text on images, and writing captions for images. Microsoft released Cosmos one at the beginning of March, and if you haven't heard about it, don't be surprised because it's being underreported in the United States for some reason. Let's talk about Microsoft and multimodal AI development. Microsoft testing the multimodal AI waters is not new. There's DeepMind's Flamingo, which also combines image and language processing, the same as MVator. There's also Microsoft's German company Alif Alpha, which came up with Magma, also a combined language image model. I think dabbling in these cases has nicely set the pace for the upcoming GPT-4. Now if you're struggling to keep up with AI's rapid growth, brace yourself because GPT-4 takes it up a notch. How? Keep watching to find out. Multimodal large language models, called MLLM, combine the best of both worlds, following natural language instructions from large language models and perception aligned with language models by training on multimodal material. This is precisely what GPT-4 is, a multimodal large language model. As a multimodal model, it would offer new capabilities compared to large language models like ChatGPT. GPT-4 promises extraordinary results across a wide range of language and multimodal tasks. GPT-4 has taken things a step further by including a third modality, video. So now we don't just have text, we're going to have images and videos as well. This will be interesting to see. We will be getting different forms of content from GPT-4 instead of just one, which is mainly text. Will it be better than Midjourney, ChatGPT, or Dolly 2? We'll find out in due time. The CTO of Microsoft Germany also stated that technology had come so far that GPT-4 works in all languages. Apparently, you can ask a question in German and get an answer in Italian. We are in for exciting times in the coming months, all thanks to Microsoft. They seem to be getting a head start in the AI race. 
If you agree with me, hit the like button and share this video with your iBesties. And now, to the moment we've all been waiting for, let's take a look at GPT-4's capabilities. I told you this video isn't just some recycled content, and I come bearing research. Here's a research paper that breaks down what GPT-4 is capable of. This is based on Cosmos 1, explaining the multimodal large language model on which GPT-4 is based. So, let's dig in. The paper explains the movement from large language models to multimodal large language models, which we have discussed extensively. Here we see various illustrations of the multimodal model in action. In this case, the input prompt is to explain why the photo is funny, and it explains that the cat is wearing a mask that gives it a smile. Here we see an image of a smartwatch and an input prompt asking what the heart rate in the picture is, and of course, it gives a text output of 57 BPM. If you think that's impressive, just wait. This example combines a multimodal communication of text and images between the AI and the user. It says here what's in the picture. A screenshot of the Windows 10 window. I would like to restart my computer. Which button should I click? Press OK. Now I would not like to restart. What can I do? Click Cancel. This left me speechless. If you think this is nothing, remember this is an AI, not a human. An AI that's capable of not only telling you what's in the image, but what to do as well. Now remember that this is only Cosmos 1, so GPT-4 will definitely have lots of improvements that I can't wait to see. Another interesting thing to see is the multimodal chain of thought prompting, which allows the AI to generate a rationale first, then tackle question answering and reasoning tasks as we can see here. I think it's crazy to see how it fails the question at first, but with step-by-step -step reasoning, it eventually gets it correct. At the rate I is going, I'm almost scared to see what the future holds, but one thing is for sure, the future of AI is undoubtedly bright and I'm here for it. Please subscribe to the channel to keep up with the latest news and trends in AI, and if you found this video valuable, go ahead and smash that like button real quick. As always, I remain your eye bestie, and if you enjoy this video, you'll love this video on GPT-4 as well. See you next time.